afternoon, everybody. We may have just gone past uh, midday, so uh, thank you for stopping with us. I'm Debbie Sharp, and I look after the pensions administration. So we've heard today what is happening with the money that we get in. How are we investing it? What are we doing with it? But um, I like to think about it without my team and what we do, then actually Justin wouldn't have anything to do. <laughs> so. I'll give you an update of what's been keeping us busy, whilst Justin's been making sure that we're actually making some money and not losing too much. What have we been busy doing um, for, for over the last 12 months here? So I'll give you an overview. Talk a bit about care. What is care? Talk about that. So that will be um, what's the big change been over the last few years in our legislation. Checking care pay. That's a big one for employers and employees. So. We'll, Touch upon that really and the importance of it for everybody. Talk a bit about our annual benefit statements. Document that people need to keep safe, they need to understand why it's important, what do they need to do with it. What are we doing with our website? Is the future meetings like this? How are we going with our communication? What are we doing? What is the future really? Touch on the valuation, Justin said, what are we doing with that? Talk a bit about data, how important it is, and just look as a quick whistle stop tour at the end, legislation, what's going on, it never stands still. Last 12 months, um, my title of my presentation was a view from the ground top floor, that's where we are, We're back in the Shire Hall here, um, which works for us, hopefully it works for our members too. Um, and we, we sit on the Shire Hall at the back and the ground floor. So anybody wants to see us, you just now catch a bus or come up here and you can, um, we'll always see anybody who wants to pop in and catch up on their, their own benefits. We've completed our first year end. A year end means to us we have to collect data from all of those 138 employers you saw on Justin's um, presentation there. We need to collect information on all of our active members. So we're talking now just under 15,000 employees that we've got that are contributing to our pension scheme. We need to know what has the employer actually paid them in the year. We've got to collect that and we have to actually make sure that we balance it and we put it all into the correct place. With that then, what we can do is actually calculate somebody and tell them what their benefits are they've accrued so far. So we have to issue an annual benefit statement. In the legislation that changed last year, the government actually brought forward our deadline to get that out to employees by the 31st of August. And I am very proud to say, actually, we work very hard with our employers, but we were one of only few, well, seven funds out of the 85 that actually hit that deadline this year, because it was a big change for employers, getting that new information from them because of the change in the benefits. Um, and some funds at the moment still haven't got that statement out, um, so we did do well with that. It was a lot of work, um, but hopefully any active members in the, um, in, the, in the audience today actually understood their new statement and, and realised the relevance of what changes have been going on in the last year. Preemptively, we knew that the introduction of a new scheme on top of all the legislation staying in place for previous benefits and the increased governance that was coming on um, our way uh, through the pensions regulator being put in place to actually regulate us now, we've got an extra layer of governance, that we did actually think and take on a couple of staff, so we've invested in our systems team. So what we've tried to do is ensure that we've got enough expertise in the team to keep on top of um, where we need to go electronically, how are we collecting this data from our employees, data transfer, we're looking at options and the little word up on the slide there, iConnect, is um, a, a middleware software that we've looked to contribute to using to get data directly from employers. So it's one way to try and cut down on manual intervention, so we've had to try and look at how do we invest to get this data quicker. Um, and of course all of that's on top of making sure we pay our pensioners, we calculate benefits, we communicate to everybody, so we have been busy. So a recap on the big change that happened, just for everybody in the audience. Um, we've still got 2008 scheme benefits in place that historically, remember, we've always had lots of changes. Normal retirement age was 65, that's what people were working to and have still have if they've got benefits in that scheme. But they've got a mix of, you'll know that we use these 160th, 180th for pension benefits. How do we work out how much pension we're going to give you? 
And in one of those previous schemes, you were also entitled to a 3 80th of a, a lump <coughs> sum. So those were what we were working on on that legislation. Pay always used to exclude overtime unless it was contractual. And there was lots of things called Rule of 85 Protections, because remember a, a while ago people could actually retire normally at 60. Lots of things keep changing where we, uh, the legislation changes the retirement age. In 2014, the main changes came in is that the benefits are now payable from the normal retirement age, state pension age, as the government uh, alludes to it. So for a lot of people now, that's changed to 67, that's changed to 68. So when you can actually get your benefits in the new scheme is later than when you could get your benefits in, in the previous schemes. Um, but now it's changed to a care scheme. That is a career average revalued earnings, and I'll touch on that in a minute. Um, but it's a better accrual. It went to a 49th scheme, but that was to accommodate and for the change of it's no longer a final salary scheme. Pay includes overtime. But remember, both of these schemes are in place, so complexity for employers has increased. They've got <coughs> different pay um, ratios that they need to work out for us when people finish. Um, and there are further protections and underpins. Anybody who was within 10 years of retirement was guaranteed that we'll do a check under the old legislation to make sure the benefit that they actually get is at least the same as they would have got. So just added layers of complexity that we just have to keep on top of for you. Um, what is care? The difference is it's no longer on your final salary when you actually finish. So anybody who's um, a retired member in the audience, your benefit would have been based on your pay when you finished. So when you terminated, when you finished early, when you actually retired. We calculate all of your service on that pay. That doesn't happen now for benefits since 2014. It still does for anybody who's got service up until last year. So we still need that final salary. For lots of people in the, the scheme, but we also now are basing their benefit on a 149th of the pay they receive each year. And you'll see the little pigs at the bottom. What that's meaning is you get uh, an accrual in one year and you purchase an actual pension. The next year, that actually gets increased you buy another year's pension, it adds into it the following year, so it keeps growing like that. So why is it important that we have to get this right? Um, previously, an employer would just need to give us an accurate pay when someone left their service. Now that's not good enough, we actually have to accrue this on a year by year basis. So each year the employer has an onus on them now to ensure that the data is wholly accurate year in, year out. Because each year they'll tell us the pay that individual has had, we'll calculate the pension for them, and then we have to inflation proof that amount as well. So if you think then the following year, we're adding another year's pension to it, we're adding inflation back onto both of those years. If we find out an employer's given us the wrong data, we've got to try and unpick this and then work back from the beginning and, and try and inflation proof it, add it all up. So it really is um, important, and we've been doing a lot of work with our employers to ensure that this immediate reward is accurate. Employers, your employee can track the benefits better now, though, because you should be able to see what you're being rewarded year in, year out. You've banked it. You just get inflation on, on that going forward. You haven't got to wait until your final year's pay to know exactly what benefit you're going to get. So for an employee, it is very, very important now that they check their care pay, this career average revalued earnings. They can look at, it's not straightforward because some things that appear on pay slips aren't included in the description of pay. People need to know what their pay is. Some people in the audience might think, oh, I think I know what I'm getting paid, but I don't exactly know what it is. I think it's important for people to be more aware if, you, if you're part-time, what are you actually getting? What's the equivalent of your full-time pay? What should you be looking for? Have you worked any additional hours? You need to be looking um, against your payslip and having a look on the annual benefit statement on our website for guidance of how do you check that what your employer has told us is accurate. If it's not, as I said, I'm picking something like this. If someone leaves and then realises 10, 10 years down the line that year didn't eight years ago didn't look quite right, it's going to be very difficult to try and correct it at that point in time. 
So on the annual benefit statement that we did get out on time, it was hopefully, unless anybody opts out, our last paper copy, because what we are trying to work on now is to get things more online. We're used to our pensioners get their pay slips online, all my utility bills are online, I have to try and remember to go in and get them. I know it's another password to think about, but it's safe. You've got all of your history in one place. You don't have to have um, a stack of annual benefits <coughs> sitting in a drawer and trying to remember where your last one was. They'll all be together. You can look at your pension record at the same time. So we want to try and go forward and use things more electronically to give people a better way of keeping all of their pensions in information together. So that's sort of watch this space um, really going forward, but that's our intention next year, that for any active members in the audience, your benefit statement should be electronic. Again, so this is leading to our website. Um, a lot more information is held on the website. This is our new website. It was changed during this year, so we've used a new platform, trying to make it more interactive. Um, you'll see here on the home page, you just click on what you want to do. So if you're an active member currently paying in, you click on the green box here, or the box on the, uh, the far left, if anybody's colorblind. Um, and then that will take you to your selection of what we think is important for an active member to have a look on. And then what you do is just look at the, the menu on the right hand side there. You click on what topic you wanted a bit of information on, click onto there, and that takes you into some further information. So it's very interactive. We hope that everything on there anybody wants to find. We do like feedback, so if anybody ever struggles or has taken 10 minutes to find a document or a piece of information, give us a ring and tell us about it. This, this information should be readily available and easy for you to find. What you can also do on here is check your pension um, account online. So for anybody who's actively paying in, you can already do this. Go in, have a look at your benefits, you can do modelling. You can check out what, if you changed your hours, if you changed your pay, what might it do to your benefits. Check it out, you just need to register. Pensioners um, in the audience will already be used to hopefully viewing your pay slips online. This is where you do that, that's where the link is. We will be communicating with our active members, um, ramping it up over the next sort of six months or so to get more people to register. If we're going electronic with our annual benefit statement, you need to be using the website, people need to register. So you'll see more information coming through explaining to you how easy it is um, to do it and keep an eye on all of your information. Valuation, all of this information I collect gets fed into the valuation so James and Justin know what they've got to um, administer, so what we've got to invest. So we're looking, have we got enough assets basically to cover the liabilities that are being built up, uh, actually to pay those benefits. At the end of the day, that's what we're here to do. Pay out benefits, you're paying us our money, we look after that money and pay you a benefit. But what we've got to do is how much money do we need for the employers to do that. I like this statement I saw in the press because what it's basically saying is where I started off. If I, my team don't get the foundations right, if we don't get the data correct, if we don't know what benefits we're going to pay out, we actually truly don't know how much money we've got to invest or how much money we need to make to ensure we keep the cost down for the employers. So we're looking, that data from the employer comes into us, we're working on it, we're using it. But anything about data affects lots of things. It's not just benefits that can be wrong. What we're looking at there is investment decisions. Investment decisions are being made on what are our liabilities, how much benefits are we going to have to pay out, so therefore how much money do we have to make. If that data is wrong, then all of the decisions the Pensions Committee are making are not being made on the right foundations. So, coming to the end of my little whistle-stop tour now, Legislation update. You may have seen in the news um, information coming out from the government again about saying public sector workers should not be receiving exit payments of greater than 95,000. So this is someone being made uh, redundant or um, having their employment terminated by a public sector board body cannot re receive more than 95,000 in their termination payments. So you might think how does that affect a pension scheme? 
Well, in the legislation that's proposed is any, if that person is entitled to receive their benefits out of their scheme and that incurs a cost to their employer, that value to their employer is actually used in this 95,000 cap. So in the local government pension scheme regulations at the moment, active members still have a guarantee that if you are 55 years or over, and your employer makes you redundant, your benefits are payable immediately unreduced. There is no discretion for the employer on that. They, those benefits are payable. That actually incurs a cost to the employer, so they have to stump up to the pension fund and pay them the money that we'll lose out because we're having to pay that benefit early. So again, even though we had the new scheme in last year and they promised us it wouldn't change for quite a while, we will be having a um, change of legislation coming through. Also, ill health review, we've got three tiers of ill health at the moment. You can get um, a full a, a, an enhanced pension, a part enhanced pension, or just a temporary pension. They're looking at taking out that third tier, they're looking to remove the temporary pension, make it less complicated, easier to understand for the members. So we're just waiting for an update on where they're going with that. Um, end of contracting out, anybody who's an active member or is an employer representative in the, in the room Contracting out, which is paying less national insurance to the government, we, being in the local government pension scheme, anybody uh, historically and still currently pays less national insurance. So you're covering yourself for the basic state pension, you haven't been paying into the additional pension. But because the government is actually changing the pension and making it a standard payment from next year, then anybody who's a member in the scheme at the moment, your national insurance contracting out rebate ceases so your national insurance through your wages will actually go up next April and so will employers as well and that the rebate will no longer be there for paying into an occupational pension scheme. So that's where we're heading, still more legislation changes, we'll keep on top of that, we'll keep communicating to everybody. So thank you for listening to me, watch out for our communications and I'll hand back over to Malcolm now for questions. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Debbie.